Folks, hello, I'm Dr. Mike for Renaissance Periodization, and today we are going to talk about two things. The first thing is going to be about protein quality and how much it matters for your gains and what that means practically in your diet. The second thing is how to take care of, both psychologically and physically and physiologically, of a pet dragon. So let's get into protein quality first. Here we go. Protein quality actually is an indexed, measured variable that nutritionists came up with, which is awesome. It's not like some, oh, geez, you know, even if you say like, oh, that's a high quality car. Well, that's a great quality chair you bought there, Bob. I don't know, fuck by his chairs. But, uh, you know, that's probably not like a car and driver quality index that's universal among all car engineers. But in sport nutrition, the way we measure protein quality has a few different indices, but one is probably the best. It's definitely my preferred scale. It is the Protein Digestibility Corrected Amino Acid Score, or PDCAAS, or PDCAS, PDCAS. Do you have a PDCAS? You're like, oh, yes, a podcast I have been on a few. Like, no, 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 I mean protein. What? In any case, that score essentially, in non-technical language, kind of measures two things. The first thing is how well are proteins digested and absorbed into your bloodstream. And the second thing is what fraction of that protein actually makes it into useful function versus is burned up as energy. Proteins, once they're digested, are just a mix of amino acids. If the fraction of amino acids is similar to that that composes your body tissues, then pretty much all the amino acids kind of go to really important, useful functions, and not much is left over to just burn off for energy. But sometimes, proteins, especially of organisms that aren't super closely related to us, the eaters, like plants, have a crap load more of some amino acids that we need and a crap load less of others that we'd really like to have. And thus, a bunch of the potential muscle growth you could see from eating a protein like that, even if it was digested or absorbed completely, your body's like, all right, time to build muscle. Amino acids, line up. And the amino acids are oh, like, first day of boot camp. And you're like, we got 18 of you. We only need one. The 17 of you, just wait here. And then we need 15 of you other motherfuckers. We have three fuck are we supposed to do with that? So we just don't have enough amino acids. Some body processes are just rate limited. So if you're taking in a low quality protein, which doesn't have enough amino acids to do some very vital functions of protein construction, that process just will proceed at its rate limiting step, which is like, oh, this kind of amino acid, we have not enough of it. We're only going to build enough complete proteins out of it. With what we have, the other amino acids that we don't need a lot of they're actually just burned up for energy, which isn't a bad thing, but you don't exactly eat protein to meet your energy needs. Carbs and fats do that really well. You eat protein in order, well, for our purposes, to anabolize and to create muscle tissue and then be able to be taken seriously when you go to the gym and say things like this, nine, nine, no wait, hold on, nine, oh, wait, this is my best pose, nine, it's, it's classic, nine. yeah. Anyway, Arnold impressions that are terrible aside, protein quality comes down to two things how well the proteins are digested and absorbed, and does the amino acid content of the protein in question match what your body needs for vital functions, but also for muscle growth and stuff like that. And it turns out muscle growth is a core vital function, so there's almost no difference between those two things. This PDCAAS score ranges generally from 100 Although technically, some proteins, like whey protein, can rank at 102 or 104, it was originally based on egg as being the highest quality protein, the scale. And then tested whey, and whey was like, fools, I'm immortal. Like easy Vegeta slash Broly whey. I wonder if anyone could do an impression of Vegeta and Broly from Dragon Ball Z. If you don't know who those, just turn off video. Fuck out. You're not in our fan base. Fuck off. Just kidding. Please stay. We love you. We're just all anime nerds. I wonder if anyone could do a Vegeta or Broly impression and actually tell them apart. I don't even know if the voice actors can do that. It's just a very upset Japanese man. In any case, at the very top, scoring 100 or 1, depending on how you like it. I like the scale that goes off 100. Scoring 100, and you can see right here it's 1, but close enough, is milk proteins and egg proteins. 
They give your body exactly what it needs and they digest and absorb basically completely. You drink a bunch of whey, that shit's going into your fucking body. And it's going to get used for vital functions, including muscle building, like 100% of it, more or less. As you go down the list, the various other proteins don't quite make it all the way into full utilization. And some of them even get to being not so great as far as what fraction of them are actually useful for your body to do the things with protein we want it to do. Yeah, they should, sure should still count for energy, but don't count for muscle growth and body repair and all that other good stuff. So the rank list there, you can see it yourself. I'll just pick a couple off here. Soy protein isolate actually gets a 99%. That's fucking great. Beef gets a 92, pretty sweet. Uh, chickpeas down to 78, oof. Black beans, 75, not terrible, I think it's worse. Peanuts are at a 52, okay? So almost half of the protein you eat from peanuts doesn't do protein things. It does shitty versions of carbohydrate things. It's just used for energy. And if you look all the way down, what do you see? The enemy of modern Western liberal democracy, gluten. The thing that shall not be named, cannot be said. I said it earlier, I feel bad. I should go to church because I have blasphemed. Gluten has a 25% PDCAAS, which means that fully 75% on average of consumed gluten does things that do not include muscle building or repair or any of that stuff. Okay, all right. And any food that has protein, any food was an exaggeration, huge quantities of foods have been tested this way and have formal uh, scores that you can look up. And there, there you go, that's how protein quality works. Now, what the fuck does that mean? How do, shut up Mike, tell me how to eat food so that I can get jacked. I don't want to look at numbers, I'm not a data nerd. Tell me facts, damn it. All right, stay calm. Number one, when they test diets on athletes, for example, or on regular people, or on subjects in training and diet studies. A huge fraction of the time, they're using what are called mixed diets, which means they don't just get you the protein from whey and eggs. You just, they give you regular food or you report your regular food intake. And it's a broad spectrum of all kinds of different protein sources. Because of this, if you're getting at least half of your daily protein per day, at least half, from sources that have protein quality scores of above 90% or 90 or whatever you want to call it, 90 on a reference frame, we'll just say percent for convenience, then the rules derived from that data probably apply to you very well. Here's a rule derived from the data. A gram per pound is roughly the amount of protein you need to maximize all of your muscle gain and, and fat loss with muscle retention potential. Now here's the thing, a gram per pound is actually a slightly overstated figure. The reality is a little bit below that. You could totally eat like 0 0.8, 0 0.85 grams per pound and you would be totally set if your protein quality was quite high. But in a mixed diet, if you consume at least 50% of your proteins from high sources, so 0.9, so that means what counts on this list? Beef, mycoprotein, which is a fungus-based vegan protein, is actually pretty good. Soy protein isolate, if you wanna be a real man, you eat soy, everyone knows this. Egg protein, milk protein, I'll tell you, almost all of the animal products that you'll eat, like fish and, and chicken and turkey and all that stuff, they're real close to 90 or above. So if you're eating whole food sources of largely animal-based proteins, you got just nothing to worry about. You never have to look up protein scores and the gram per pound and all those rules definitely apply to you. You don't have to start being concerned with, oh shit, am I eating too low of quality protein? Do I need to eat even more than a gram? Almost certainly not because the direct data that they reference for this came from mixed sources. It's not like, well, in humans consuming only egg and whey protein, then yes, a gram per pound is enough. But in humans consuming a mixed diet, well, they need three grams. That's just not the case. Being that that's the case, you don't want to take that rule of, hey, 50% or more is totally good too far. So number two here is you still want to try to get as much of your protein from high quality sources, which means probably a 90% or above PDCAAS score. And half is cool, but if you can do better than half and it's easy to do, awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So you should always be looking for, essentially the cheat sheet here is like egg, 
dairy and lean meat and high quality vegan soy microprotein, etc., that should be the chunk of protein you smash onto your plate that looks like the size of your fist kind of every meal of the day. If you're doing that, you don't have to, you could just tune the fuck out. We're going to get a huge drop off rate. Scott, the video guy, and views of this video because they're just like, hey, he told us twice to leave. Once if we didn't know a stupid Dragon Ball Z reference, and twice because we didn't need to pay attention to this presentation anymore. So, yeah, you just don't have to worry about it a ton if you're doing that stuff. Now, if you are eating a ton of low quality sources, what does that mean? You go into my fitness pal and you're like, oh, I'm eating 350 grams of protein. Amazing. I'm overqualified. But then you look at where it's counting protein from and like 80% of it's like breakfast cereal, oatmeal, wheat bread, tortillas, peanuts. And all of a sudden you're like, oh, okay, that does have a lot of protein in it, that stuff, and it really adds up. Like a typical chipotle tortilla has something like 10 grams of protein in it. But fuck, man, that's a lot of gluten and other types of proteins. So protein that your body can actually use for anabolism, it's got like three grams of that shit. So what happens if you're eating a lot of low quality proteins is if you're super fucking anal and you're a super fucking nerd like me, what you can do is take shit plant proteins that score below 50% and count them as 50% carbs, 50% protein. You can't do this in my fitness pal, you gotta do it yourself manually. But what ends up happening is like, let, let's say you eat a turkey, 20 grams of protein from the turkey, turkey sandwich, and then you get 10 grams of protein from the bread. That's, let's just imagine that's it. It's a shitty turkey sandwich, where the fuck is the mayo? What about veggies? Cheese, anyone? A sandwich without cheese is a sick joke, but I digress. So let's say, fuck it, I can't even, I can't even do this analogy well. Turkey plus cheese is 25 grams, damn it. And then the bread total is 10. The total carbs for that is 40. What you can do is say, okay, 10 is bullshit. I'm going to count that as a five. So I'm going to say instead of 25 grams of protein that that sandwich has 30 grams of protein. But it sure shit isn't 35. And then 40 carbs from the bread and everything else. But I know that five of those grams of protein are going to go be used for energy pretty much like carbohydrates are. And amino acids can be split into uh, ketogenic and glycogenic, but TLDR, you just count them as carbs. So you count five grams as carbs, so now the sandwich, instead of you writing down 35 grams of protein and 40 grams of carb, yay, that's not what your body's getting. Your body's getting much closer to 30 grams of protein, not 35, and 45 grams of carbs, not 40. Does that matter a ton? No. But if you really care, just know that that's a thing you can do to ease your mind about consuming low quality sources. Now, lastly, if you are a vegan or you have trouble getting a lot of high quality sources, some people live in that not so you know Western world life yet and meat is expensive, protein is expensive, so I totally hear you on that. Complementary sources are a good start. If you mix beans and rice, you get uh, two things. One is a great, actually, uh, complementary source that is now a complete source of protein and is pretty high quality. And two, uh, whatever that thing, beans and rice don't miss you, whatever it is that makes Puerto Rican girls look all, god damn, baby, what's up? In any case, if you're a Puerto Rican girl, don't you come talking to me, that's what Mr. Jared Feather is for. Are we allowed to say that? Uh, we just did. He won't turn you down. Uh, from... I'm just going to shut up. In any case. <laughs> Don't make it worse. <laughs> Say what? Don't make it worse. Don't make it worse. <laughs> shut up, Mike. Get back to the presentation. Ideally, ideally, you should get at least 50% of your sources from 90% plus protein scores. The good news is mycoprotein and soy protein are ultra high quality and they're cheap as fuck. And don't worry about the overeating soy protein is almost entirely a myth, especially if you combine it with microprotein and a few other sources, you're going to be totally good to go. But here's the last but, and I'll almost finish the video with this. And then just one more thing. A lot of people that eat a certain diet that doesn't get them enough protein will buy up uh, some kind of protein shake for a supplement, like a soy protein shake or whatever, egg, whey, doesn't matter. <laughs> and what they'll do is they'll say, okay, I need 150 grams of protein per day. My current diet gives me 75. Fine. I'm just going to have a 75 gram protein shake 
like once a day, and I'm going to get 100% of my daily protein. That is true, as nominally is true. Like as you write it down, it's a true statement. But your body doesn't absorb, digest, and especially assimilate protein into muscle in one big bolus. As a matter of fact, you guys remember those rules where they said, oh, any more than 20 grams of protein at a time, your body just fucking wastes it. That's bullshit. But it's not entirely false. It's not 20, but it can be 30, 40, 50, 60, depending on how big you are. And it probably isn't 80. Maybe Brian Shaw or Hofdor Julius Bjornsson can fucking anabolize 80 grams of protein at a time. I'm sure they could. The rest of us need to spread our protein into three, four, or five roughly evenly split boluses. So if you're supplementing your diet with extra protein, don't just have one big ass shake of 75 or 100 grams of protein once a day. That's going to do something, but like half or more of that shake just gets burned off as energy. It's expensive energy. I'm shit, you know, protein supplements aren't free. So what you probably want to do is have half of that shake with one meal and half of another, or split it up under thirds, or learn how to cook with protein powder so you can have more protein-packed ingredients, and then you get your protein relatively evenly throughout your multi-daily meals. That's how you can optimize if you are supplementing with protein if you're not getting enough from your diet. All right, I hope that's been very instructive. Um, was that a thing I was going to talk about? Yes, yes, how to um, take care of a dragon. We have to end this video on a really bad note. Guys, dragons aren't real. They just, they don't exist. And uh, when I'm hanging out with my friend's kids, I like to tell them that as early as possible. Um, gotta learn sometime. And if they did exist, last thing I'm gonna say, because dragons are scary, right? They fly around, right? And they're rather maneuverable, albeit slow by modern military standards, and they breathe fire, okay? You guys ever seen that movie, The Wrath of Smaug? Smaug. Whatever, the, the fucking hobbit, and that dragon pissed everyone off. Here, here's the thing. I would love, and when the GPTs get good enough at doing a text-to-movie very well, I'm going to fucking make a lot of movies I probably should. Here's one. I want to see, shit, six dragons against just one F-35 Lightning II or even a fucking F-22 Raptor. You fucking label them targets, sidewinders, heat-seeking missiles, like the fucking Block 3 variant, the best one. You fucking kidding me, bro. Hey, Dragon, you better hold your breath, you stupid motherfucker. Missiles out. Fuck you, Lord of the Rings. I'll see you guys next time.